My name is uh, Larry Brandt, and uh, today I'm here with Dr. Kashab, who, along with Dr. Uh, Al Hada and Paul Fockins, uh, presented a very nice review on the role of endoscopic ultrasound, or EUS, in the evaluation of indeterminate biliary strictures and suspected patients in patients with suspected extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So I guess my question is, after you define for me what an indeterminate stricture is, uh, to take us through uh, how you would approach a patient who was found to have such a stricture and what you would recommend uh, are the major points that the practitioners uh, amongst us uh, would keep in mind. Uh, this is a uh, great and broad question. So indeterminate biliary strictures are, uh, are problematic. Uh, they're really diagnost they are really diagnostic dilemma. And the reason for that is we don't have adequate diagnostic tools yet. Uh, we define indeterminate biliary strictures as those um, that, uh, that uh, you have done imaging on, you have done ERCP on with brush cytology, and still you don't have a diagnosis. So, so let me interrupt you. Are you saying that now we're talking about a stricture? You find a stricture, mm -hmm. transabdominal ultrasound, ERCP, whatever technique you use. You find a stricture, you did some brushings, and uh, maybe you even did a biopsy, an intraductal biopsy, and you're just not sure it's benign or malignant. Is that the point that we're now addressing strictures that have that behavior? Exactly. So you did your CAT scan on, or MRI, you did your ERCP, you did your brushing, still you don't have a diagnosis. Now this is called indeterminate. Okay. And this is where the, this is where the problem starts. Yes. Um, in these patients, you have a lot, of, um, a lot of techniques or a lot of procedures you can perform to try to increase your diagnostic yield or sensitivity of your testing. Uh, the basic test that I just mentioned, the ERCP with the biliary brushings, in best hands, the sensitivity is 40%. Doesn't sound so good. No, it's pretty bad. So the false negative negativity is pretty pretty bad. The if it's positive, it's positive. It's pretty specific, but the sensitivity in best hands it's forty percent. So we have to look at other testing to uh, to do in these in these patients. Uh, we consider indeterminate biliary strictures as malignant until proven otherwise. Having said that, thirteen to twenty four percent of these patients will end up by having benign etiologies. So you say if you send 100, 100 patients like that to surgery, on average, 15 to 18 will have benign etiologies. Okay. So that's why we need a, a diagnostic test that helps us identify who has a benign stricture and who has a malignant stricture. So of all of the tests that we can do, mm -hmm. um, which would be the best after your review? And, uh, and this is why I wanted to talk about uh, EUS FNA for the diagnosis of uh, suspected cholangiocarcinoma. I approached uh, Dr. Vargo, who is in charge of uh, the reviews, with uh, I thought this, is a, uh, this will be very ap applicable mm -hmm. to our daily practice. And, uh, and the reason, especially, that uh, I think a lot of endoscopists are not aware about the applicability and the uh, high sensitivity of EUS FNA in this setting. So you can do uh, cholangioscopy, uh, you can do uh, cholangioscopy directed biopsies, you can do in introductory ultra ultrasonography during your uh, EUS, you can actually do some kind of a new uh, cytologic techniques like FISH and digital Im imaging analysis. All of these increase your sensitivity a little bit, maybe 40, when it, it can go up to 60, 65, and best hands. So we're still not there yet. But, My opinion, yeah. but a lot of those procedures are not available to the practicing gastroenterologist. And I know that you, uh, in particular, are a little pressed for time today. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to move to your almost your conclusion mm -hmm. and tell us of all of the available tests. And there are even many more than the ones you said. Yep. Which ones are the best? Uh, in my opinion, and according to the existing literature, EUS FNA is the best diagnostic test with a sensitivity of about 80%. Okay. And so now for the indeterminate strictures, we have EUS FNA as the best. Yes. Does it matter whether it's a proximal stricture, a distal stricture? Does it matter whether the patient 
comes to you with a stent in mm -hmm. place, because it's not uncommon to just put a stent right. in and then send the patient for a referral. So let me have the answer to those questions. Uh, great questions. Uh, definitely EUS performs better for distal structures with a sensitivity of about 80%. When you talk about proximal structures, it's down to about 50. You're talking about EUS alone or EUS with FNA? EUS FNA. Okay. Because tissue is the issue. You need to get, uh, you need to get uh, tissue diagnosis to diagnose. What makes it so difficult to get a proximal uh, aspiration? Yes, so first, uh, seeing a mass is easier in the distal bile duct because when you talk about the hilum, it's very close to the liver. Uh, so seeing a small mass can be technically difficult. And a mass at the hilum is away from the uh, is further away from the lumen where your scope tip is. Uh, so uh, so because it's further from your scope, technically getting a biopsy from that mass will be more difficult. And also to visualize a proximal mass, your scope position is around the pylorus, either pre or post pylorus. So your position is a little unstable. Uh, you can lose your position easily. For all the above, for, for all the reasons I just mentioned, uh, technically it's more difficult to diagnose an FNA MS proximally, and that's what I think um, uh, the diagnostic yield or the sensitivity of EUS FNA for distal structures is better. And isn't it hard to maintain your position during the FNA itself? It is, it is, and that's why uh, we recommend going into the long position rather than the short position. So push your scope. Uh, and then use use your uh, use the stomach to support your scope if you're on the long position. Uh, definitely, you need to maneuver uh, your scope. Drop your left hand to see a proximal structure, but I recommend to go to a long position uh, because it's more stable. And uh, for people who do FNA, uh, for people who do EUS uh, and are just getting into FNA, how many procedures do you think it would take for someone to learn to do FNA? And should they restrict their evaluations to the distal stricture first, or should they just go for it? Uh, good question. You know, the, um, the ability to perform USFNA on biliary strictures is definitely more techni techni technically challenging. So I think you should be comfortable uh, F uh, getting FNA on lymph nodes, pancreatic masses, submucosal lesions, uh, and then the next step will be ability to identify, localize, and then FNA biliary masses. I can't, re uh, scientifically, I can g I can't give you a scientific number, uh, uh, but my estimate is you have to be comf comfortable with basic FNA and then move to FNA of biliary lesions. That qualitative response is good enough for me. Okay. Answer the question about the stent. If yes. If there's a stent in place, mm -hmm. what do you do then? There's no data that stents uh, decrease your diagnostic yield or sensitivity. Uh, we look at the lit literature of the sensitivity of EUS FNA for pancreatic masses in patients with pancreatic head masses in patients with stenting, and the liter literature is mixed. Some studies showed a less or decreased sensitivity. Some tests showed no difference. So uh, in, in my opinion, um, it might decrease it a little bit, but it really does not matter. Can you just perforate through the stent itself if it's a coverage stent? Uh, you can, no problem. Shouldn't, no problem shouldn't be a problem. And uh, one important thing is when you FNA a mass, uh, sometimes you enter into the bile duct itself and you can contaminate it. That's why if a patient has a stent, it's great because drainage is established. Mm -hmm. If the patient uh, does not have a stent, you probably have to put a stent right after your FNA. So if you had to uh, give the listeners of this conversation one take-home point, what would it be? Patients with indeterminate biliary, biliary strictures do uh, EUS, and most of these patients you'll see a mass, the majority of, C, uh, of these patients. If you see a mass, perform EUS FNA. If you don't see a mass, you see a thickened bile duct, you can also uh, biopsy, uh, biopsy the wall. Uh, if the patient has a stent, you do not have to remove it before, just proceed with your, your EUS FNA. If the patient doesn't have a stent, and obviously they have biliary obstruction, uh, the recommendation is to put a stent right, right after your FNA. Okay, I think that that's uh, pretty good. Great. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and have a great meeting. Thank you.